Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'm going to show how to configure a Linux virtual machine uh, for uh, some settings that I like to use and that are very effective for use. Um, so I've just finished the install process of a new virtual machine, and I've got it sitting here. Um, it had initially launched, and so I immediately told it to power off, and now we're back to actually wanting to run it. So I could go through here, I could click on it, and then click Play Virtual Machine and launch it. But before I do that, I actually want to change some of the hardware settings. So I'm going to edit the virtual machine settings. What I can do is I can select what of the physical hardware on my system gets shared with the virtual machine. So initially it's got some fairly minimal configurations, it's therefore going to run reasonably slowly. So on my machine I've got about 16 gigs of RAM I think, um, so I could choose any amount of RAM up to 16 gigs or so to share. So it initially defaulted to 1 gig, I'm going to bump it up to maybe 4 gigs, that's going to be plenty for it to run on, and I actually go down maybe just over 2 gigs, that gives me a bit more space on my host OS. So memory is a big thing to up. Next thing is processors. You probably want to give it more than one processor if you've got them. So my machine's I think a quad core. Uh, I'm actually with uh, um, hyperthreading. I'm just going to go for four cores here to uh, make it simple. Um, and the rest of those I don't really need. Uh, that's good enough. So that I've already got the hard drive space set up, so that's good enough there. Don't have to worry about that. Network address translation. I'll come back and talk about this a little bit later on. Um, there's some interesting setups here. Basically, we're going to start off with network address translation for the network adapter. And that's sort of the simplest way, the easiest way to go um, in courses or projects where you're working with uh, needing to run a server inside of your virtual machine. We'll have to change that as well. Um, and then the last thing here is an important one. Make sure that you've got accelerated 3D graphics turned on. This may sound funny if you're not planning to run games or something like that, but having this enabled will speed up your uh, responsiveness of your system quite significantly. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. Default graphics memory is probably OK for me. And I think that was all I wanted to do on that, so let's launch this and log in. So we'll be able to see how this is running. Um, it's having a problem. Do you want to try to connect? I'll say yes, fine. Not quite sure what that was for. Um, if you are unable to change any of those settings that we just saw on the previous slide or screen, you might have an issue that you need to have your virtual machine completely powered down. So here, I've got uh, I had gone through Linux and I told Linux to actually power it down and shut down completely. Whereas if I was instead going to be running, uh, or if I instead close my virtual machine by clicking the X in the top right hand corner, or tell it to suspend or something like that, then my machine is still running and basically you can't change the amount of uh, say the number of processors on Linux while Linux is effectively just in hibernation or something. So you actually have to power that down completely. Okay, so I'm back in here, I'm going to log in, I think my super secret password was Brian. And I've now logged into uh, Linux, and it's going to boot for the first time. Again, up here it gives me the tip about Control and Alt to escape. Generally, you only need that when you're in text mode. For example, when it's booting up, it has captured the cursor and holding on to it. Okay, so it may take a moment for the whole system to come up online and finish starting up. Uh, first thing I might do is unclutter my little bar on the left here and get rid of a number of these that I really don't want. This will be useful for later on when I'm running programs. I can actually see what's running. Okay, first thing to show is you can resize this. And as you resize it, it doesn't just sort of scale things weirdly, a leave blank space, it actually stretches the desktop as though you've got a bigger monitor. So this is very handy to fill it to the screen, or even if you want to have a couple things up and running at once, or fit it to a capture window for a YouTube video, you can resize the actual sort of screen space for your virtual machine. Now, if that didn't work, then what's probably going on is you have not installed the um, VMware tools correctly. And I'll just kind of briefly show you what to start off with on that. If I click the Player menu here in VMware Player, and then I go down to Manage, and over here, I can say Reinstall VMware Tools. So that's where you start off. Uh, have a look online for what to do on that. The screen that we were at before with changing the virtual machine settings is here. I'll bring that up now. So this is not actually 
part of Linux, but this is the configuration of the virtual machine. So exactly what we saw before. So you can check your settings to see, well, what is it actually running at. Okay, so a couple of things to demo. First thing is transferring files. So let me load up a uh, window here. Home, I'm just going to create a new folder. Uh, transfer. Come into here. So in Windows, I've got this file, testing.txt. It could be any file I like. I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to wait till a second until the cursor changes to be the uh, kind of copy file icon, and I can drop it in here, and it has now copied the file from Windows to Linux, so from my host OS to my guest OS. If I double click on it, it'll show me here in gedit, and I can add in some other te text. So testing with guest OS. Let me save that. And now I can drag and drop it back out, and we get the standard sort of Windows box here. So I'm going to copy and replace, and let me launch. I'm just going to bring up a Notepad++ window, and I can drag it into here, and we can see that we actually have the text. So this is a good way to transfer files back and forth. Maybe you've uh, got something off of a uh, repository, you've downloaded it through Windows or your host OS. Uh, it's a good way to go. Okay, next thing I wanted to show is copy and paste. So inside of Linux, if I go into here, if I've got some text, maybe this is a URL, I can right click on it, say copy, go into Notepad++, right click, paste, and there it is. Another interesting thing is in Linux, if you just highlight some text, so let me just highlight guest, that automatically is put in the copy and paste buffer. So now I can just come in here and control V, and there it is. So the same as doing control paste, or just paste. So that's an interesting little uh, shortcut. Okay, so we have bidirectional copying. Let me take this. I'm going to try that again. Right click on it, copy. If I come back in here, I can right click paste. So we have bidirectional clipboard, which is fantastic. It makes it easy to get uh, information back and forth. If you want to set up a different keyboard mapping, um, as I do, so I'm going to go up here to the right and get the system settings. So go down to system settings. And from here, I'm going to say text entry. And I can select an input source. So I'm going to add a new one here. I want the language to be English. If you wanted a different language, Chinese or something, uh, it should be in the list here as well. And I'm going to set up Dvorak. Now, I generally don't want to have any. Um, bindings here to switch, keyboard bindings to switch between different mappings. So I'm going to click into it and press the backspace key, which gets rid of any bindings that were there. Okay, so now I've got a keyboard I can type on. I'm going to go and close that, so most of this, and close that down. Let me save out of that. Okay, uh, next thing to show is how to use a uh, USB memory stick. So I've got a USB memory stick already inserted into my computer. Um, if you were to um, just insert a new one when you already have the uh, virtual machine in focus, the virtual machine will usually get um, access directly to that. But in this case, since I've already got the, virtual, uh, the USB memory stick inserted, it didn't get it when it booted up. So I can tell it what gets mapped over. So I can go down here to the removable devices, and it'll list all the different removable devices that I can associate or basically give control of to my virtual machine. So at the moment, I happen to know this is the PNY USB 2.0 device, and so I can say connect. What this will do is it'll, this will make Windows sort of lose it, as though I pulled it out from Linux, and then insert it into Linux. I could now say copy a file onto this, so let's go copy and then paste. And so now I've got the files on my USB memory stick. If I wanted to eject this, I can right click on this and say eject. And so that will now get Linux to um, unmount the file system. And if I wanted to actually remove it from um, the virtual machine, well, I've, right now I could actually just pull it out of my computer safely, or I can go back down here to the removable devices, select here, and go across to disconnect. So this is very handy if you're trying to use, say, a USB cable or some other device that is mapped across, maybe a webcam or something. Um, you can tell kind of, do you want the uh, device that's plugged into your actual computer? Should Windows get it? Should your host OS get it? Or should Linux, your guest OS? 
Okay, so that's a number of the basics on that. Um, one thing I always like to do, it annoys me if I come back to my computer and the virtual machine has sort of gone to lock. So the way to get around this is to um, click on the, in the upper, oops, pardon me, let me get this right. Click on the cog wheel in the upper right, and then I'm going to go back down to system settings again. And from here, go to brightness and lock, and turn off this lock. So that will uh, now save me from having to uh, unlock and type in my password any time that I actually want to use it. Um, okay, so that's a number of the basics. I mentioned we come back and see the uh, network address translation and the configuration of the um, the network adapter. So let's look at that now. So if I go back here into my player and I'm going to manage virtual machine settings. Again, for this to actually take effect, I'm probably, I think I have to reboot. At the moment, we've got network address translation, which means that my host OS, Windows, is effectively the sort of the parent of, or managing, or wrapping around my guest OS. And so the rest of the world cannot see my guest OS. Anything my guest OS wants to do, Linux wants to do, goes through Windows and out to the outside world. What I can do instead is I can say, well, um, get direct access to the physical network. And so that would be bridge. So network address translation allows Windows to kind of go through it. So I'm going to leave that setting for the moment. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to launch a terminal. So that's Control-Alt-T is a s simplified way of getting that. You can also go to your uh, kind of we'll call it the start menu, for lack of a better term, and type in terminal and launch this straight terminal. So from here to the terminal, I can type if config, and it'll list all of the Ethernet adapters I've got. The loopback you'll always have, that's always going to be uh, 127.0.0.1. Now we can see here at the moment I'm on 192.168.93.129. Well, that's not the network I'm running on. So let me launch a command prompt here in Windows. Bring it across, and I'm going to type ip config. I got a whole bunch of, these are a bunch of virtual adapters from all the different virtual machines I've got installed, but effectively my main one is up here at 192.168.0.123. So 0 is the, um, 192.168.0 is my network mask, the network I'm running on. So I'm not on the same network. I can't really, and in fact I cannot, um, other machines on my network cannot ping, for example, into my virtual machine. So in order for me to change that, I've got to switch this to network address, or to um, away from network address translation. So let's go down to manage and virtual machine settings. So for my network, I'm going to switch this to physical. And I could then configure the adapters if I wanted to um, allow it to what I want to access it, but that's fine. I just want to access the one adapter. So if I click OK, maybe this is going to work on the fly, we'll see. So I just press up, and it tells me I'm on the same map. Yeah, OK. So I would have to, uh, I think, reboot my system um, for that effect to actually occur. And then I would be able to run, for example, a server inside of Linux. So anytime you're running a server where other devices on the network need to communicate into your virtual machine, you have to use that physical uh, network connection instead of the network address translation. Okay, and the one final thing I'd like to change is I'm not a big fan of this uh, file browser because on the left-hand side you get sort of this uh, really, I'm going to call it crippled view that's like really nice and interesting but doesn't give you the functionality you want. So the easiest way to do that is to install Nemo. So a good way to install most stuff on Linux is do sudo apt-get. apt-get is a program that will install applications for you. You need um, super user permissions to do this, so running sudo, and then start with an update, and type in your super secret password. Update will basically cause your computer to go out to the web and ask a bunch of different repositories for um, information about how does it, uh, what are the current applications it can access. Now this might not work because I've already just changed my uh, let's cancel that. Let's go back and reset my networking. Manage virtual machine settings and network adapter. 
let's go back to network address translation just to actually make that work. So if config, prove I can actually get out to the web, ping google.ca, unknown host, we can see here that it went down, now it's back up, so we're good. Okay, so press up to do the update. Now it goes through, whipping through, pulling down information about new packages that maybe are available. This is a great way to ensure that any software you're installing happens to be the latest version that is, shall we say, selected for the distribution you're working with. Okay, so after this has been uh, completed, I'm going to do sudo apt get install, and I can just type the name of the program or the name of the package I wish to install. I happen to know that I want to install Nemo. So you know the identical file browser. I'll say yes, I want to install that. Taking an additional six megs of space. It's nearly identical, except it seems to have a more powerful uh, left bar. So this is a good way also if you wanted, for example, NetBeans, you just type sudo apt get install space NetBeans and it gives you a version of NetBeans. It might not be the version you want in a number of cases, it might be a bit older, but it might be good enough in many ways. So now here I can type, for example, Nemo, and that happens to be this files, so I'm going to drag it on my bar on the left carefully here, and let's get rid of that, and now I'm going to undock. And good enough. So let's kill that. And now I've got a more powerful bar on the left. I can tell it I want tree view, and now it's something I can actually work with. Okay, so those are all the basic configuration options that get me up and running to a uh, reasonable setup here. The last thing I want to show is how to shut down. So if you go to the top right, and then I can say uh, shut down, for example. Or you can, in fact, just click the X here on the top right. So I've got two ways of doing this. If I go through Linux, and I tell Linux I wish to uh, shut down, here I can either restart or shut down. And this will basically get Linux to go through this normal process. I can say click on the X, which is what I often do, and this is going to tell virtual uh, VMware to start the shutdown process. If I say power off, it's as though I just pulled the plug from the machine from the virtual machine. And I could then lose things if I've got programs that are open, whatever I've got is, is sort of, you know, running state is lost. It's like a power failure. So generally I'm going to say suspend. And what this does is this causes uh, VMware to kind of hibernate the virtual machine. It saves the state, it takes it a minute to save all the state of RAM and so forth to disk. And then later on, if I relaunch VMware, I can say I want the demo for video, I can play it, and it'll come back in the same state I left it in. It may take a minute to restore from um, hard drive, but it comes back up exactly as I left it. Which is nice and fast for um, working with the system and then shutting it down, restarting it, and so forth. And now here it's asking me, well, these are some devices that I could access, kind of going through the mapping process. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, thank you very much for watching.